Hello, this is another video episode about the nomenclature and the notation in the Schillinger system of musical composition. The focus in this video is on symmetric harmony and there is a companion episode about diatonic harmony. Terminology and symbols used turn out to be a stumbling block when reading the Schillinger system. In the symmetric system this is caused by the logarithmic nature of the frequency axis. And in this video I will try and explain the notation and I will provide an alternative. The alternative notation is based on the equal tempered chromatic scale. And I will use the pitch class disc representation to demonstrate the symmetry. Along the way you will learn the definitions, the nomenclature and the symbols used in this system. The essence is that symmetric scales have multiple roots at a symmetric division of the octave. With the multiple roots or tonics, we may either create symmetric scales for writing a melody and we can also use it for writing harmony, chord progressions and I will show a number of examples. Hopefully, after getting more familiar with the notation, you will feel comfortable and discover the potential of this system of harmony. Here's the starting point for the notation in the symmetric system of harmony. What we see here is the equal tempered chromatic scale shown on the linear frequency axis. In equal tempered tuning we use a chromatic scale with 12 pitch class units within the octave. Two neighboring pitches in the scale are separated by the semitone interval, here the symbol I. On the piano keyboard or a musical staff, neighboring chromatic pitches seem equidistant. However, that's not the case when we consider musical acoustics when we are looking at the frequencies. That aspect is shown on the linear frequency axis where I have plotted the frequency ratios of all 12 pitch classes in the chromatic scale. The introduction of equal temperament in the 18th century implied the definition of the semitone interval in the frequency domain. The semitone interval between two pitches means that their frequency ratio is 2 to the power 1 12. Look at the frequency axis and observe how as we move from lower pitches on the left to higher pitches on the right, the actual frequency differences increase, whereas the ratios between neighboring pitches remain constant. The tick marks on this line indicate the frequency ratios of the chromatic pitch class units with reference to the lower C on the left of the diagram. The frequency ratios are real numbers, except for the octave interval which has a frequency ratio 2, an integer number. These ratios can also be written as root numbers of 2, which is implied by the definition of the semitone in the equal tempered tuning system. For example, have a look at the interval from C to F sharp. The frequency ratio is 1.414, which is the square root of 2. Another example is the interval from C to E, the major third, which has a frequency ratio of 1.260, which is rounded to three decimals. The exact number would be the cube root of 2. In the diagram, I've shown the root numbers for all 12 pitch classes in the chromatic equal tempered scale, and it is this root number notation which is used by Schillinger in his symmetric harmony system. Myself, I use an alternative notation, which is based on the number of semitones in an interval, and that is shown in red in the diagram. This concludes the first part of the introduction, the background behind the Schillinger notation, which, as we have seen, is caused by the logarithmic nature of the frequency axis. We'll take a brief sidestep with this slide, which shows two more aspects that we will need in our discussion. What we see here is three representations of a diatonic scale. On the left we see the pitch disc diagram, which has all 12 chromatic pitches distributed along the dial of a clock. In the center we see staff notation, and on the right there is a keyboard diagram. 
The pitch disc diagram is great for showing the cyclic nature of the chromatic scale and also for displaying symmetry, which could be symmetry in musical scales or chord structures. Shown here is the C Ionian scale or the C major scale, which has seven pitch units. It has a single root C, and we can see that some intervals in the scale are two semitones, like going from C to D, whereas others are only one semitone, for instance, going from E to F. Let's listen to this diatonic scale. The example shown here illustrates two essential differences between the diatonic system of harmony and the symmetric system. First, check the distribution of the seven pitches of this diatonic scale along the disc diagram and you will see that there is no symmetry, there is no left, right or upper or lower quadrant symmetry. And secondly, this diatonic scale has only a single root, the C, the tonic degree of the scale. And now let's turn our attention to a symmetric division of the octave and we'll see that there is a limited set of options. Here's the first possible symmetric division of the octave. The octave is split into two equal halves as indicated here by the pitches C and F sharp. In the pitch disc diagram we see a left-right symmetry as indicated by the vertical red line. The interval from C to F sharp is six semitones. S is the interval from F sharp going up to the next C. In order to get familiar with the alternative notation, I've shown both the Schillinger notation, which is the square root two, which is the frequency ratio between the C and the F sharp, and my alternative, which is expressed in the number of semitones here, six I. What we have obtained is a symmetric system, which consists of two pitch classes, which can act as roots, as tonics of a scale or as chord roots when we consider harmony. There are six options of symmetric octave division into two equal halves. The example shown here is C, F sharp to C, but of course there are alternatives, for instance, D, A flat, D, etc. So this is the first symmetric system based on the tritone interval between the two tonics, the two roots. We obtain the next symmetric system by equal division of the octave into three segments. Shown here is the example with the roots C, E and G sharp, all at an interval of a major third, four semitones. Remember that the frequency ratio between two neighboring pitches now is the cube root of two. Again, this is the Schillinger notation. My alternative root four semitones. The three tonic pitch classes form an augmented triad chord structure here shown as the symbol S+. There are four alternative options for symmetric octave division into three equal parts. The example shown here is the C, E, G sharp. The symmetry property is clearly visible in the pitch disc diagram. Have a look at the position of the red dials, the symmetry axis, which in this case form the logo of a luxury German car maker. Along the same lines we obtain the next symmetric system, which is the division of the octave into four equal segments. There are four pitch class units which act as tonics and together they form a diminished seventh chord. The example shown here is with the four pitch classes D, F, A flat and B, all separated by a minor third intervals, three semitones. The Schillinger labeling of this system would be the fourth root number of two. There are three alternative options for such a four root symmetric system and they display a double symmetry as indicated by the position of the symmetry axis in the pitch disc diagram. In the next symmetric system, the octave is split into six equal parts. There are six tonic pitch class units and the interval between each pair of neighboring pitches is two semitones, a major second. 
Together, they form a whole tone scale, and there are two alternative options for such a division. The example shown here is D flat, E flat, F, G, A, and B. And finally, we arrive at a maybe somewhat trivial symmetric division of the octave into 12 semitones. The 12 tonics together form the full chromatic scale, and obviously there is only one option. The 12 tonics can be used as roots in a chord progression, but there is no potential for derivative scales. That concludes the overview of the symmetric system. We've seen the six possible options for dividing the octave. We've seen both the Schilling or root number notation and the alternative, which is based on the number of semitones that separate the tonics, the roots, in the symmetric system. Next, I will illustrate how symmetric scales can be obtained from these multiple root, multiple tonic systems. We'll first look at the two segment division over the octave with the triton separated tonics here C and F sharp. The tonics are shown as red dots in the pitch disc diagram and in the keyboard diagram, and they are shown as open notes in the staff notation. We create a symmetric scale by filling in the gaps between the tonics with additional pitch units. The first example in staff notation shows a 6 pitch unit scale which was created by adding two pitches between C and F sharp and in this case they were the D and the F. The scale is completed by copying, by mirroring these pitches to the second segment and in this case they become the G sharp and the B. And here's some more Schillinger terminology. We've already seen the square root 2 notation for the labeling of this symmetric system. In addition, there's the capital E with subscript 0, which indicates the expansion of the scale. This term was introduced already in the video on diatonic harmony nomenclature. The expansion E0 tells us that this scale is in close position. All pitches lie within one octave range. Schillinger called such symmetric scales with multiple roots and one octave range group 3 scales. The group 1 and group 2 labels are reserved for diatonic scales. Of course, there are many options for creating a symmetric scale in the two tonic system, and on the right in the staff notation we see an example with 8 pitches. This is the octatonic scale consisting of alternating semitone and whole tone steps, also known as the diminished scale. Those of you who are familiar with Messiaen's modes of limited transposition will recognize the analogy. Symmetric scales are used for creating melodic continuity. However, I will leave that to another episode. Here are two symmetric scales in the tree tonic system. The 6 pitch unit scale is also shown in the pitch disc diagram and in the keyboard diagram. I've added one additional pitch to the tonic, which lies a minor third above this tonic. It is shown here in closed position, therefore in expansion E0. As an exercise, you might want to analyze this scale for its harmonic potential. Find all the triads and four note chords that are included in the scale. I've used it quite a few times in compositions. The scale on the right is a 9 pitch unit scale, which has two additional pitches between the tonics. Note that together they form a whole tone scale and that some of the pitch classes are doubled. The scale is shown in expansion E1 which means that building the scale, we skip one tonic. So, the sequence of tonics now becomes C, A flat, E. The total range of this scale is more than one octave, 
and therefore it is labeled as a group 4 scale, a symmetric scale with multiple tonics and a range over one octave. Following the same procedure we may create two example scales in the 4 tonic symmetric system. The 8 pitch unit scale on the left is also shown in the pitch disc diagram and in the keyboard diagram. Note that as the number of tonics increases, the number of alternative options for creating scales decreases. The example shown here is an octatonic scale but now starting with a whole tone. The 12 pitch unit example on the right together forms a chromatic scale and it is shown in expansion E2 which means when building the scale we are always skipping two tonics. The total range of this scale is three octaves and therefore it is labeled as a group 4 scale. The final symmetric scale example is in the system where we have divided the octave into six segments. In close position, therefore in expansion E0, there would be only one option for creating a symmetric scale. And therefore the example here is an expansion E2 and we've created an 18 pitch scale, which of course means that we have doubled some of the pitch class units. All pitches from the chromatic scale are included, six pitch classes have been doubled and the total range is three octaves and therefore it receives the label group four. Now let's have a look at how we can use a symmetric system in a chord progression. Again we start in a symmetric system with two tonics which are separated by the interval of a tritone, six semitones. And let's return to some of the terminology and symbols that were introduced in the episode on diatonic harmony nomenclature. In harmonic progressions, we work with chord structures, for which I use the symbol capital S. The symbol S has a subscript, which is an integer number that indicates the highest chordal function in the structure. The example is based on major triads, which therefore contain the chordal functions 1, the root, 3 the major 3rd and 5 the 5th. Since 5 the 5th is the highest chordal function, this chord structure is labeled as S5 and this number 5 also indicates the tension level of the chord structure, the implicit dissonance level. The setting of this chord progression is in two staves and this introduces another piece of Schillinger terminology which is called layers. In this example we have two layers, an upper layer L2, a lower layer L1, and these have different functions. The lower layer has the function of the base and it contains only one pitch, which is the root R of the chord, the chordal function 1. The upper layer L2 contains the harmony and it consists of three pitch units, P1 to P3, all the three chordal functions from the structure. The next element in a harmonic progression is a voice leading the way each individual part is moving. And in Schillinger terminology this is called transformation. This aspect is covered more in depth in the video episode called Triads and Transformations. In the example, as we move from the C major to the F sharp major chord, there is what's called counterclockwise part transformation. Note the close position voicing of the chords, the stepwise motion in the three upper parts and the contrary motion between the upper harmony layer and the lower bass layer. Example 2 is also in the two segment symmetric system but this time we use a four note chord, a seventh chord as the basic structure. The minor 7th chord is used throughout the example and therefore we call it constant tension. 
The setting, again, is in two layers, with the lower layer containing the bass function, the roots of the chord, and the upper layer containing the harmony, the four-part harmony. All four upper parts move in parallel, mostly stepwise, and this type of setting is typical for jazz big band writing, and it's called four-part sectional harmony. Example 3 is in the tree tonic symmetric system. When writing a chord progression in this system, it's relevant whether we are moving our roots in ascending or descending direction. When moving along the roots in descending direction, we say it's in a positive root cycle, and the reverse when we are moving in ascending root direction, which is a negative root cycle. And this aspect was already covered in the video episode on diatonic harmony, and we extend that concept to the symmetric system. So here, a positive root cycle means that the roots are moving from C to A flat to E, whereas a negative root cycle implies that we're going from C to E to A flat, as is the case here. The example again is constant tension, since our basic structure is a major triad, an S5. The setting is in two layers, with the bass function in the lower layer and illustrating the negative root cycle, the upper layer has the three-part harmonies. Voice leading is stepwise and there is one new aspect, the rhythm. This is an illustration from a technique from the Schillinger theory of rhythm. The rhythm is generated by having the interference of two clocks to metronomes ticking at different time intervals. The resulting rhythm is described by what Schillinger calls an attack duration group. And here we see the rhythm for the clocks ticking at time intervals of 4 and 3 time units. The time unit in this example is the quarter note, however I will not explain the details of obtaining such a rhythm since it's beyond the scope of this video. Example 4 illustrates how we may create a variation on the setting given in the previous example. So, we are working in the tree tonic symmetric system. We use negative root cycles and a constant tension S5 structure. Major triads only. What has changed is that we have embellished the parts by adding passing tones and a somewhat busier rhythm. The result is a quasi-counterpoint setting. Note the green arrows in the staff, which indicate parallel or contrary motion in the parts. Finally, through the instrumentation, using a harpsichord, we achieve a dance-like flavor in this example. In example 5, we move on to the 4-tonic symmetric system. The four roots are separated by intervals of the minor third, three semitones. In this chord progression, we use a combination of both negative and positive root cycles. The example is in constant tension, since we use one chord structure only, a five-part chord, here an extended dominant chord with chordal functions 9 and 13. In this setting, there is a melodic curve with the highest pitch in measure 3. There are also passing tones in the parts and there is contrary motion where possible. There is an irregular time signature and listen to the setting for a brass ensemble. In example 6, we move on to a variable tension setting. Again, in the system with 4 tonics, an equal division of the octave into 4 tonics. We use a sequence of 3 4-part chord structures, which are a 4th chord, a half-diminished 7th chord, and an extended dominant chord with a minor 9th in the lead. In the 
chord progression, again we use a combination of positive and negative road cycles. In the voice leading we find steps and leaps, and the overall movement is diverging into a wide open position and then converging back into a closed position voicing. From this basic setting, we may create what Schillinger calls an instrumental form. The setting is now in four parts, which means a redistribution of the chordal functions to the three upper parts. I've added passing and neighboring tones in the parts and rhythm patterns, which are used in imitation, as indicated by the colored lines. The end result is a more lively setting with a counterpoint flavor. Example 7 is in the 6 segment division of the octave, with the tonics forming a whole tone scale. In the chord progression we use positive root cycles, with the roots descending by two semitones, a whole tone step. There is one chord structure only, a three part minor triad, so it's a constant tension setting. The voice leading is dominated by leaps and there is overall opening contrary motion leading to a climax at the end. Example 8 demonstrates a variable tension in the same 6 tonics symmetric system. We use two 4 part chord structures, a dominant 7th chord with suspended 4th and a dominant 9th chord. In the chord progression the roots move along positive root cycles and the setting is one of 4 part harmony only, so we have the bass part now playing different chordal functions. The same setting and voice leading was also used, but in a different musical style, in the Lila music to this video. As an alternative, there's the instrumental form shown in example 8b. Rhythm patterns have been overlaid on the parts, there is the use of passing tones and imitation. In the bass part, there is a rhythmic ostinato as defined by the two element attack duration group. The instrumentation is for harpsichord and wind quartet and the melodic curve leads into an apex near the end. Example 9 is in the last symmetric system the one with the 12 tonics. In the chord progression we use positive root cycles only, implying a chromatically descending bass part. This is a constant tension example using major triads only. The voice leading, or as Schillinger calls it, the transformation, is based on counterclockwise circular permutation of the parts. This is indicated by the red numbers above the lead part. Note how it's moving through the chordal functions 3, 1, 5, 3, 1, 5, etc. It's following a cycle in counterclockwise direction. This yields a voice leading in the three upper parts, which is dominated by leaps and open position voicing. The final example will demonstrate negative root cycles and variable tension in the 12 tonic symmetric system. There are two four part chord structures, 
a minor 7th chord with added 11th and an altered dominant chord. In the voice leading there is a focus on creating a maximum number of sustained notes and the overall tendency is closing contrary motion towards the end. The instrumental form created from this basic chord progression involves a setting in three layers. A lower layer with bass function and two layers containing harmony. The harmony parts have been embellished with passing tones and there is a rhythmic ostinato in the chromatically ascending bass part. In this video episode I discussed the terminology in the Schillinger symmetric system of harmony. I explained the background behind the notation and the symbols used when we divide the octave into equal segments, yielding a system with multiple tonics, multiple roots. I created and discussed a number of examples of symmetric scales and symmetric harmony chord progressions. Together with the companion episode about diatonic harmony nomenclature, this should help you in getting familiar with the Schillinger notation. Thanks for watching.